The flange is another fundamental feature within Inventor Sheet Metal. The sheet metal flange feature consists of a face and bend connected to an existing face along a straight edge. Flanges can be added by selecting one or more edges and then specifying a set of options that determine the size as well as the position of the material to be added. To create a flange, all you need to do is select the flange command, then pick the edge or edges you'd like to add the flange. Let me show you. Here, in this sheet metal part, I have a sheet metal face already created. To begin a flange, I'll navigate to the sheet metal tab of the ribbon, and on the Create panel, I'll select the flange icon. Or right-click and select the flange icon from the marking menu. The flange dialog box appears. And before I discuss any of the options here, I'll select the edge where I'd like to add the flange. A preview of the flange appears in the graphics area, and now I can define the options. This procedure can be done in reverse as well. Let me click Cancel to show you what I mean. I'll right-click on this edge, and then select the flange command from the marking menu and a preview of the flange will appear along with the flange dialog window where you can begin to define the flange parameters. Here, you have the option to flip the direction of the flange. Next, you can define the height of the flange either by specifying a distance value or by selecting two geometry. For this example, I'll choose distance and enter a height of three inches. The flange angle can also be changed from the default 90 degrees. Notice if distance is specified, the height datum options become available. With this first icon selected, Inventor will measure the flange length from the outside face intersection. The second icon measures the flange from the inside intersection. The third measures the flange height parallel to the flange face and tangent to the bend. And the fourth button specifies the dimension type, either orthogonal or aligned, which is the default. This option specifies whether the height measurement is aligned with the face flange or orthogonal to the base flange. I'll select the outside face intersection. By default, Inventor will make the flange the entire length of the selected face edge. If you'd like to change this, you can click the More button. Here, in the Width Extents options, you can specify a width value that can be either centered on the midpoint of the edge or offset a specific dimension. An offset for each end of the flange, where you can specify different offset values for each side of the flange, or choose the From To option that allows you to select a face or vertex where you'd like the flange to begin and end. I'll set this flange to an offset value of half an inch for both ends. I'll click the More button again to collapse the dialog box. Here, you have the option to use the default bend radius specified in the sheet metal style, or you can specify a different radius by entering a value in the field here. The next section for defining this flange is the bend position. This option controls how the material will be added to the sheet metal part. There are four buttons here that allow you to specify the position. Your options are inside of bend face extents, bend from the adjacent face, outside of base face extents, or bend tangent to side face. The best way to understand what each of these options does is to click on each of the options and notice the different results in the preview. I'll use the inside of bend face extents option for this example. In order for this edge to be bent according to these parameters, Inventor recognizes that relief cuts will be required, so it will automatically add them. The parameters that define the shape and size of these relief cuts are found on the Bend tab of the Flange dialog box. Here, you specify the relief parameters. At the bottom, you can override the default bend transition to control the flat pattern appearance of the bend transition. 
I'll go into more detail on the Bend tab in a later lesson, so for now, I'll return to the Shape tab to finish the flange. When you have the flange you'd like, you can click Apply to accept the flange and continue defining additional flanges, or click OK to close the flange dialog box and finish this flange. When I click Apply, you can see the finished flange appear in the graphics area. I'll add a couple more flanges here, using the same parameters from the first instance. I'll use these flanges to create an enclosure. Notice how the flanges are mitered automatically when interference is detected. This is a nice feature that takes some of the guesswork out of creating sheet metal enclosures from flanges. Before finishing up, I'll make a quick edit to adjust these seam gaps. When I'm satisfied with the results, I'll click OK and the flange is complete.